Hey, what's up, everybody? I am Russ, and today we were joined on Dapper Dividends by Fabio Marciano, who wrote The Dividend Millionaire, The Proven Path from Zero to $100,000 in Passive Income. I was so blown away by this book that I just had to bring Fabio on the channel to share him with all of you, who he is, why he wrote the book, something he wishes he would have known before he started dividend investing, and then stick around for Fabio, where he shared a few dividend stock picks with all of us. So with that being said, I present you Fabio Marciano. Hey, what is up? I am Russ with my Dapper Dividends, and I am super excited to be joined by Fabio Marciano. Did I say it right? Marciano? You got it. Spot on. Like Rocky, right? Exactly like Rocky. Marciano. For anybody that, oh my God, I'm just, how old are you? We, so we just chatted for a few yeah. minutes before we got on this, but how old are you? A little, little older than you. I'm 48. Okay. And yeah, I'm 40. Actually, I will be 44 on Wednesday. So yeah, happy early some people birthday. might not get that reference to The Rock, to Rocky, and then yeah. to even older Rocky Marciano. So that is who we are talking about us old timers, I guess. God. <laughs> so anyway, we got into that a little bit. I am here with Fabio Marciano, who wrote a fantastic book called The Dividend Millionaire. And he hit me up on Twitter, asked me to check the book out. And I kind of thought that it was just going to be, you know, I've seen some of these dividend books and it looks like people put them together in a weekend. But I just, I think the first thing I said when I saw it, I just, oh, wow. This was really, <laughs> really something else. So uh, there's going to be a link below if you would like to click that. I strongly, strongly recommend if you're learning dividend investing or even if you are seasoned and you look at this stuff all day long like I do, you put in so much great information. It's just a fantastic read. You will not be disappointed. So there will be a link in the description below. So with that being said, Fabio, I guess just tell us a little bit about who you are and where you're from. Yeah, for, first off, thank you so much for the kind words. Uh, I reached out to you for a reason. You know, it's one of those things where I, I've been following you uh, on Twitter and I've been following, obviously, your podcast. I uh, listened to it for, for a while and I, I realized that you were, you were after the truth. Uh, and that's why I kind of uh, reached out to, to people that I, I felt like had the credibility that also had the right mindset and the chops. Um, again, yeah, I'm 48. I'm, I'm living in New Jersey, born, born in New York. I uh, went to school in Boston. So that's like, that's who I am. You know, beautiful wife, two kids, uh, eight and a half years old. Uh, life's good and a dog, you know, you got to have the dog, you see all the dog painting behind me and everything <laughs> like that. Um, and, you know, just to cut to the chase, you know, I, I got the investing bug back in 11th grade and e-com teacher did a stock picking contest and things of that nature was part of it. I don't even remember where I ended up. All I knew is that I learned about this guy named Peter Lynch and, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. one up on wall street, read that book, wanted to be Peter Lynch. I went to school in Boston. Fidelity is in Boston. Um, you know, so I, I thought I wanted to be a fund manager. Uh, didn't quite work out, but, you know, I, I learned a lot about investing. I got my finance degree, uh, undergrad, got a job right out of school working at Pepsi in a financial services team. And I went to school at night for my MBA because you, you had to have your MBA at night. Uh, I met a, uh, this cool guy who basically said, just get it now before you have kids and family and all that stuff, like knock it out. So that's what I did. You know, I, I got my MBA, I think it was 24, 25, um, but I also had an eye-opening experience. I was 25. I was living at home, you know, at the, at the time and going to school, et cetera, but I had a negative net worth. And I, I was like, I'm making this money. I'm busting my ass. This, you know, the company's paying for some of this. How is this possible? And that's where I discovered like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, David Bach, and like all of that, like personal finance, live below your means, invest. Gateway, you know. the gateway authors. <laughs> it's exactly, it's like a drug. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I love to read my wife, my God, she's like, guess what? You got another book today. Um, and, you know, I fell into that. I found the Rich Dad forums, you know, and I, I basically shared my cash flow calculator. It was just an Excel spreadsheet, but it led to like the slippery slope of trying to help others you know, like 20,000 people <laughs> downloaded the thing. Uh, it was just crazy. So that was like the genesis of it. 
happy to say that, you know, I hit my net worth goal. I reached my fine number, like life is good. Um, and, you know, I found myself at a certain age going, well, now what? Similar to my mentor who I talk about in the book, um, you know, like, what do you do now? You know, you're, you're at this youngish age. You still like working. I love, my, I love what I do. I like my boss is amazing. The people I work with, I didn't have passive income. I didn't want to do real estate. And that's what led me down the path of dividend investing. And just like you said, I read so many books, I read the blogs, read all this stuff. And it just felt like something was missing. And, and you know, not to pick on it, we'll get into it, but like there was just something missing. And I felt like I had something to say. And I just started collecting some of these ideas and things like that. And it just became a book. Like it was just my notes and things like that. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to share with everybody. And hopefully I can help a couple of people, you know, kind of go down a different path mm -hmm. and not get burned like I did. Because I, I definitely got burned when I first started dividend investing. So that's a, the long and short of it, you know, uh, and that's I why we're it. here today. Yeah, um, getting burned. I think from what I've experienced, and just this goes throughout life, is that getting burned and making those mistakes truly are the better teachers than being successful. And the, have you found that, that if you are successful at something right away, it can be a negative thing because you don't have that discipline. You don't have that experience of, of not, um, not learning it, not doing the wrong thing and seeing the consequences. Um, yeah, I, I'm kind of like you in, well, in getting burned and starting dividend investing not too long ago, I'm very unlike you in that I went to, I barely got out of high school. I went into the Navy, came out, got into the trades, and that's where I've been ever since. And if I had a book like, like yours, it would be, it would have been life-changing truly. And, you know, that's not blowing smoke or anything, but it really is just a different way. And you know, it's kind of upsetting that nobody ever taught me a lot of the things that, well, most yeah. of the things that are, I'll go ahead and say all the things that are in your book. Uh, my grandparents were the closest people I knew that were, had any kind of financial sense. And they always told me, save 10% of your income. Yep. That was it. In there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not even and, anywhere and else. And do what with it. Right. <laughs> right. So I remember thinking like, oh, okay, in the checking account, I guess. Yeah. And I just, it's sad to say, so uh, 2003 is my first 401k action that I got with yeah. an employer. And oh my God, for so many years, I was doing 5% or 3% and we were just spending mm -hmm. money. There yep. was no plan. There was no direction, no anything. So the fact that you say you wrote that book to help people like that. I mean, that is just, that's just awesome. Um, speaking of your kids, yeah. uh, are they at all interested in investing? Are they, do they have any passion, any, any, anything that, no. let me hear it because mine sure don't. Unfortunately. Yeah, no, it, it takes a while again. So eight and a half year old twins, boy, girl, um, just, just great kids, oh, smart, wow. fun, funny, and all that, all that stuff. Um, probably up to a year ago, my son would be like, well, dad, what's the point of money if I can't spend it? And I'm like, oh, we got a problem here. You got the wrong dad, A, right? Uh, and then my daughter is like money hungry, like, you know, just saving money, like always like, oh, can I have money? Or where do you have money? How much do you have? Like, she's just curious about that stuff. I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is a bad thing. And a couple of days ago, and this is funny because you obviously know the stock. Uh, my son goes, I, I want to know who makes TT games. And I'm like, TT games, like, and it's, it's WBD, right? It's the spinoff of at and I believe they make TT games or that's like part of their, you know, discovery network and all everything like that. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So like, he's like, all right, I want to buy shares in the stock. And, you know, I'm like, okay, I pull up my, my app and I'm like, okay, it's this amount of money. Like, I don't know anything about the company or anything like that. You have to do proper research. You know, I, I wrote a book on this, <laughs> but it was just, it was just great. Like they're interested in it. You know, we've, we've bought Apple and Disney for them over the years and stuff of, of that nature. Um, and then just before I said, all right, daddy's got to go downstairs and, and do this podcast. And they were like, so pumped. They're like, can't wait to listen to it and everything. So oh it's my just, God. It, listen, Russ, it's just exposing it. You cannot push this stuff on people because I, my biggest fear is that they'll be like, 
oh, we, you wanted us to invest all our money. You were a miser, or you were too cheap or this, or, you know, you risk the money, whatever the it is. I want them to say like, we, ha we have a better life because we are investing our money. We get to enjoy a portion of it. And then we put the rest away for a better future. Um, and then to share with others too. And that's all like, that's the story. And eventually they'll get there. I, you know, I, you know, I'm grateful for the parents that I've had and the way they raised me and what they've given me. And the hope is you pass that along, you know, it's yeah. it, that that's it. Like that's the bottom line. So it, it I feel like anything, whether it's sports or money, investing, anything, you just don't push, you don't force, you know, you can encourage. Yeah. And it's funny you say that. So my daughters are 14 and 13. And if I bring up anything, investing or stocks, like Good luck. Ah, dad, again, with the stocks, yep. but it's okay because we set up the custodial account for each of them. Maybe a couple of years ago, actually, I know when it was when we got the stimulus money and I didn't yeah. need it. I didn't Smart. want it. So I said, you know what, for each of you kids, the government's given us money for you. We're going to put it in a custodial account. And I let them pick the stocks. Uh, I actually, I, I pre-selected like maybe 10 or 15 companies that I was okay with. And then I said, I could do one of yours that just and yeah, you know, the one did, pick. one did, yeah, one did Amazon. And I thought yeah. it was a little overvalued, oh, yeah. but just the fact that they're so far ahead that somebody is telling them you actually own these businesses. You are a business owner. Yep. And I didn't realize that until I was pushing 40, which mm -hmm. is so, so sad. And, but you know, so us. it's like you said, I'm, I'm happy to hear you say that because I'm not pushing them anymore i'm just like yeah. hey this is what your stock did or you and know just just to jump in the age thing who cares who cares yeah. if you're 30 who cares if you're 20 who cares if you're 50 you just get religion and start doing it the right way you can start living below your means and quickly change the trajectory of your your financial future like that and it's just sticking to the plan and it's just realizing it like again i i found out you know, by doing a net worth statement, cash flow statement in my early 20s and realized I was on the wrong path, yeah. you know, and, and so like I changed what I was doing. And I love when I see like some social posts and things of that nature. People were like, I just started investing last year. I'm 35. Awesome, man. Awesome, gal. Like, that's the way, you know, it's like, and, and that's why, you know, I don't share my net worth. I don't share like my monthly income. Like, who cares? Like, here's the basics of the way to do it. I follow tons of people. I got a case study. Uh, John Boy from Canada is in the book. My God, his story one. is amazing. Yeah. Like, and he posts his, he just posted a couple of days ago, like what his quarterly income was. And everybody's like getting all like, up, like amazed and happy and excited. I'm like, yeah, follow him. Like, that's the way to do it. You know, just every month in month out, you're putting your money into your account and investing in quality stocks. And it's actually, yeah. I said it wrong, quality businesses. And that's exactly. what it's all about. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. It's funny though. So we won't share our net worth. And I, so my wife, you know, we talked about it. She didn't want that. So we came up yep. with the in-between area where the, on the board behind me, um, I have the bridge portfolio, which is, you know, one day going to pay for a bunch of our expenses. And then there's yep. a, I rolled over, $30,000 from our uh, 401k. And I mm -hmm. did it right in um, the end of March of 2020. Yeah, so I was going to guess it March was just, 23rd, the low. <laughs> it, well, not, yeah, not that lucky, but yeah, it was, it was crazy that uh, the timing on that was just pure dumb luck. And mm -hmm. just, but I wanted to, to just use that money. Cause it was at another, so I changed jobs and it was getting killed by fees with um, oh, yeah. American funds. And they only had a few, you know, mutual fund families. And there was like a well over 1% expense ratios. Yep. Yeah. So at least now where we're at, I was so happy. I changed jobs in a different, and I looked on the roster and there was Vanguard ETFs. So I was oh, like, yeah. <laughs> beautiful. Thank you. you know, yeah, I couldn't, I can't do individuals, but I can, I did see a bunch of different Vanguard selections. Yeah. So that's, that's what we're in. Um, but yeah, so the only thing I say, which is really cool and it shows you how quickly this can turn around is when I started doing this around 2018, mid 2018, we were just barely over a, um, 
barely over a positive net worth. Mm -hmm. And now all I'll say is that we are closer to a million than we are to zero. That's and amazing. It's, yeah. It's just crazy. Just getting out of debt and um, just like you said, spending less than you earn and saving and investing the rest in something that you understand. And, and, and we talk about it right, on the channel and you said in your book, if you don't understand, you can VOO and chill. You can just That's buy it. an ETF. Like, you know, I, I, it's one of those things that, and that like, tie, like in the book, it, like one of the concepts I, I introduce is like the Bogle line, right? Uh, after Jack Bogle about like, that's the index funds. Like that's what they're returning. And, you know, that might piss off some dividend investors because like, wait a minute, it's two different things. Why are you talking about total return as well? You know, both price appreciation and dividends for total return. I'm just interested in dividend income. My point is like, well, do you know even if you're good at dividend investing? Like, do you know if you have crappy stocks in your portfolio? And, and me personally, I don't care if it's a dividend king or an aristocrat or a contender, whatever name you want. Like, is it a good business? And not yeah. only like, is it good business like years ago, like today? How's it doing? And then what's the potential for the future? And that's the thesis of the book. Like just trying to figure out how do I analyze the stock teaching people like all the, they're all free tools. Like it, it's amazing what you can do today with a couple of clicks of the button. I just did it today. Cause I'm like, Russ is going to ask me for some picks and I'm like, yeah. well, let me just do a quick analysis during my lunch break and find a couple of stocks that I've been watching. And like, would they pass the dividend gauntlet or not? Like, would you want to like look into these investments? And that's it. And if you don't want to do this extra work, or if you just want to take an ETF and be average, have at it. Like personally, that's, I, I'm a, a growth investor and a dividend investor. So for me, like I want to continue to like try to beat the average. That's my goal. So are you, what's the benchmark that you're trying to beat then? Or are you trying to beat a benchmark? Um, well, I'll just real quick for yeah, me sure. personally. Yeah. I'm trying to, I guess if I'm beating a benchmark, it would be the S and P dividend yield, yep. not so much the capital appreciation or that's fine. You know, just just that's our goal. I want grow it predictably, largely predictably growing right. dividend yield uh, as long as it can go. You know, so Russ, that's exactly what I do. I you know it's about one point eight percent. It might go fluctuate here and there. One point eight percent yield on the you know SPY. I always just. I always use the SPY uh, ETF versus like VU uh, mm -hmm. and some of the others, but you can just look at all of them. They're, they're within that 2% range. So for me, it's like, okay, well, if your total portfolio with REITs and BDCs and all these other types of investments, if you're not a, above 2% and you're not focused on price, well, then what are you doing? Just buy exactly. an index fund and, and like call it a day that you know that you get the price appreciation. For me, for total return, I always look at, you know, S and P, and I do look at Nasdaq. You know, like I'm a tech guy, and like there is the focus there because I want to know the range. I do really focus on the S and P 500, like that. That's just what I do. I don't dabble like the Russell 2000 and some of the other uh, indexes, and that's it. I I have an actual watch list in Seeking Alpha, which is free, called Bogle Line, <laughs> and I'll I'll come across the <laughs> stock, I'll put it in there, and I'll look at the performance, and I'll just look at total return. I can click tabs, valuation, dividends, it's all free. And I see how has this stock performed over the past, you know, year to day, one month, five years, 10 years to know, like, is this, you know, guru online who's pitching this thing, talking about this thing, is it doing well? I'll look at REITs, you know, REITs might be a different animal, you know, you, you, maybe it's not like total return. So I'll look at it for, versus a couple other REITs. Uh, you know, uh, business development companies, BDCs, I'll look at it versus like to like, but yep. the majority of people, the majority of things I invest in are, are common stocks and companies as S and P. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, Bogle. Yeah, I was just, I, I just realized, I just found they have a website. They have a really nice forum where I think it's the Bogle. Yeah, the Bogle, yeah, the Bogle heads. heads. Yeah, I've never been on it. I, you know, listen, I've read about it. It's fantastic. Again, I, I'm agnostic. I, I want to I want to know the best investing philosophy or thing that I could tap into and, and learn about, you know, and 
Like I, I'm not going to be able to learn everything and do everything. I'm at the season of my life where I wanted guaranteed income. And that led me to dividend investing as well as other things. You know, I'm exploring Lofty, the real estate and platform. Ah, I, I'm in Lofty. I have yes. some property through Lofty. Yeah. Yeah. Same. But you know, like I'm weighing, okay, like what's the benefit there? Do you get the depreciation? Do you not? Like it's all about income. And, you know, there's some crypto and things in my portfolio and everything. But like, again, the majority is stocks, dividend stocks, growth stocks, things of that nature. Um, and I'm not like sitting here trying to, you know, I, I know the majority of people who invest don't beat, you know, the average. Mm -hmm. But there's also a reason for that because they trade too often. They're looking for home runs. If you just <laughs> buy and hold quality companies and you look at the math, you're going to be able to outperform the average. It's just, it's just what happens. Yeah. And you know, it's, it also sounds like when people try and time the market, how hard that is to time the market. I've heard a Absolutely. fantastic interview with uh, Nick Majuli on. Oh, awesome. Uh, he's been on a few podcasts. I think it was on the uh, We Study Billionaires podcast, I believe. Yep. Anyway, so he, he had a really eye opening stat about people trying to time the market that if you wait for that big crash and dip. So he said, if you were to buy on um, March 23rd, 2020 at the absolute low, yeah. low of that crash and sell off that that was still, I think, 7%. 7%. Yeah. You heard that? Yeah. yeah I, 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 I listened to, I'm reading the book. Up, I'm, I'm reading the book. 7%. Yeah. It was 7% Sorry, of above what was it the high of, a of few, like 2017 or, or 2018 yeah. yeah like and that I, just speaks to the you know the importance of like forget it you're even if you like you just said you perfectly timed the absolute bottom of a market but it's still only marginally lower than the high when everybody and that's look i look at the cape ratio you know and the schiller p like crazy stuff like that well not crazy stuff but for most people like what are you doing like, okay, it's overvalued or not. You don't know that. Okay, so maybe you buy fewer shares that month. And that's the beauty of things like the 401k and, and like automatic investing. Like you just don't think about it. You're just like, like your, your wonderful strategy of buying a share of Pepsi every, every week. <laughs> like you love the company, well, you've done yeah. your work and you just buy. And some days you're buying at a higher price than lower and you're going to average out and then you're getting the dividends. And that's the strategy. And, and Nick's, book is called just keep buying. Yep. For yeah. I, I'm, it's on my reading list. Yeah. Um, yeah. With Pepsi, it's kind of funny. You used to work for Pepsi. How was that? Yeah. Was A fantastic company. I, I, I worked in financial services long, long time ago uh, and, and got the bug. And that's why I went into marketing, to be honest, you know, you, you work for a marketing machine, a company culture like that. I just wanted to be a marketer after, you know, being exposed to like the like top of the top you know, like Shaquille O'Neal, Jeff Gordon, Britney Spears, like all of that was <laughs> happening when I was there. And it's just like, this is insane. Like, you know, and you almost think like every company is like that, which they're not, but it was, um, I lucked into a lot of things in life and that was one of them. You know, it's funny you say that. Uh, I haven't done it too much, but people investors will use as part of their their strategy for going over stocks they'll go to glassdoor.com just to see oh, yeah. what people that have left the company or are at the company or anonymously are saying about the companies and yeah i did that with pepsico and it's really hard to find um you know a lot of disgruntled yeah. comments or people that that have disparaging things to say about them the, oh, the Indra Nui was the ceo for quite a long time uh homegrown talent like the it, it's it's just great cultures and that, that a lot of the companies I invest in, like part of the thing I look at is the company. And one of the things is management. And so I, I will look like, are these people owner, owner um, mentality? Like, do they have skin in the game? Are they former, are they the founders? Are they like people that have been there for 20, 30 years? Um, you know, like they basically drink, and, you know, drink the Kool-Aid or, you know, like they bleed the company, you know, uh, colors or whatever the, you know, uh, metaphor you want to use. And that's important. You know, you, you want to make sure that you have, you know, great quality leaders that know how to reinvest capital and, and manage the business to grow it. And that's part of like in the book, like the, you know, investors checklist, there's 23 different things yep. I look at and it seems like difficult, but I went through 
six, six companies at my at lunch. Like, so I was just eating and I was just quickly <laughs> jotting it down again. I've done it a couple of times, but a, three or four websites free, you scan it and you can quickly analyze like, Hey, is this something that's worth my, my time and effort, you know, my core 20 to 30, you know, stocks or uh, investments that I'm going to put money into. Right. Yeah. And I've been thinking about doing that pairing some down, you know, I have a lot of odds and ends like, uh, like MGP, um, MGM mm -hmm. growth properties. I have five shares sure. in that, uh, just stuff like that. I'm thinking of just selling off just to consolidate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's funny with the Pepsi thing. What I, I understand what I'm doing and I just wanted to just see what happens because I, I really like the company and everything I looked at, I, I wanted it to be a foundational core position of the portfolio. So I figured just doing this experiment for a hundred weeks, it's buying awesome. high, kind of going against a lot of the things that Warren Buffett talks about, like waiting for that margin of safety, you know, yeah. for the right. But my theory, my simple theory is I think this is going to be a good company for many, many years and hopefully decades. And if that's the case, then companies and businesses like that are always going to be in demand and their stock price is going to stay high and keep going up. Um, you know, so yeah. we'll see. I'm almost there. I got four more weeks to go or three That's more awesome. weeks after this. Like, it's just, it, it the, the, um, I would, I would miss a week. Like I mentally like that. That's not my MO. Like I'm not the planner type and stuff like that, but it's, um, <laughs> it, it, you know, and I I've heard quotes and I, I can't come up with it right in my head, but like, you know, 20 years from now, whether you bought it at 40 or 42 or 45, yep. like who's going to care? Like, it's just not going to be that important so that's why sometimes like waiting is the problem like getting you're know, staying on the sidelines and with some cash waiting for the proper time to buy is is not difficult like i i personally when my stocks on my my dividend list they, they take a hit i buy more that day like yep. you know like it's just like oh oh it's awesome it's down three or four percent i click over is like any news or any reason nope it's just you know it's the the Warren Buffett quote, like in the short term, or Benjamin Graham, in the short term, the market is a voting machine. In the long term, it's a weighing machine. Yep. In the yep, short absolutely. term, a couple of months, like people are just like, things should not move as much as they do in a given year. Like even quality stocks can be up or down 40, 50, 60% for no reason. The business, it's always about looking at what's going on in the business. And if something hasn't changed, I, I, I'm going to throw money at it. Yeah. And a lot of times that now it's the algos, right? The computers oh, yeah. that a lot of their parameters are set on reading the charts and price levels, and they'll just start selling and they can trigger a sell-off, but you know, that'll affect the stock price in the, you know, days and weeks, but they're not going to change a company's fundamentals course, over no the way. course of years. So yeah, it's, you, you look at the wonkiness and the weird like price movements at the end of the trading day, especially on a Friday. And it's like, someone needs to make a number, you know, to make sure their puts or their calls uh, expire worthless or in the money. Like there's just some stuff going on and it's just like, makes no sense whatsoever. Computers. Uh, and like, that's wall street, you know, playing some games. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I got a question. What is one yep. thing you wish you knew before starting dividend investing? <laughs> so uh, I'll try to go quick. It's probably a million. I you know, know I it's a the, million. <laughs> well, it, it's the obvious. Don't chase the yield. So like when I first got started looking, I went to marketbeat.com. Uh, I forget. Now I'm blanking on the author's name. It's not Carlson. He's uh, He wrote an excellent book on dividend investing. It's a great site, marketbeat.com. Mm -hmm. I was... I just did a quick Google search for like high yield dividend stocks and it went there and it ranked them. I could click on a button. It went from high to low. And I was like, Ooh, you know, and I barely did any research, which I, which is ridiculous. Like I've been doing this long enough. You know, I kind of did some research. I looked at, Oh, they've been paying this dividend for so long, et cetera. The companies that I invested in were recommended in another book by a guru, you know, guru. And I was like, oh, they're good. You know, he's buying it. That's the same one. So I lost 20K like pretty quickly. Oh, like it yeah. was just the dumbest. Like that was my, you know, my lesson. And then I, I was like, oh, yeah, I don't chase yield. Like I kind of get that. And it was just, you know, I, I kind of, that was part of learning. And then I went deep and, you know, I talked to a mentor of mine about like, 
he's like, you're an idiot. So like, you, know, you just learn like that was part of it. Um, the other thing that, you know, I, I wish I, I call them dividend rockets. He calls them dividend. He called them another name. I, I renamed them because his name was stupid, <laughs> but he, like dividend rockets, like basically low yield, but high dividend growth and great businesses. So like Microsoft would be an example or an Apple, like, so, you know, you're sitting there, you're like, oh, it's 0.6% yield. Like that's not even 1%. Like I want money now. I'm like, I'm not retiring. I don't need that money now. Maybe in 10, 15, 20 years, you compound 10 or 12% year over year over year. And maybe it slows down. Oh, obviously yeah. you can't keep that up. <laughs> like you're going to end up with a two, three, 4% yielding stock plus price appreciation. That's two, three, five X what your other four percent yield is and that's like it was the eye-opening thing where he was you know he's a little foul language is about the dividend aristocrats and some of that like he may be like you should sort by like the yield on some of these things or you sort by the the dividend growth rate and you see like some of these name brands are like one percent a year it's like oh we're this 50th yep. year in a row of raising dividends and it's like my God, even outpacing like inflation. Yeah. One third, like two percent inflation, three percent. Now it's like eight, but like that's not gonna last. No, but yeah. yeah. It's it just the logic of it. And that's what I wanted to bring to people in the book of just being like, just question things. I'm not saying like there's 65 dividend aristocrats, like you know, like a bell curve. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like there's some super performers and bottom performers. You're getting average results if you buy a dividend aristocrat like ETF. Why do you have to buy that crap stock? Like, why do you have to buy a low performer? Just, just right. get rid of them. And it, it sounds like, oh, yeah, just buy the ones that are better stocks. Like, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Look at the businesses. They are telling you by their dividend increases every year. You can tell by payout ratios if it's increasing too much. You can look at their, like you said, payout ratio based on cash flow. I look at the same thing. How much is cash flow? How much is dividends? Is it getting too close? Like, are they going to have to cut this? Is something going wrong with this company? Like, they're just like, I want to stay on the list. Oh, we raised it a half percent. Like, gee, thanks. Like, anyway, you, remind, you remind me of uh, here in Downers Grove, Illinois, which is a town right next to me, is Dover Corp. And I believe ticker DOV. And I believe yeah. that they are. I think they might be at the top of the dividend Kings list. I want to say they've, it's like 67, 68 years, something like that. They're, they're way up there, but yeah. man, those increases are microscopic Yeah, and it's still an increase, but they are just so small. And in the other direction, one of my mistakes was when I first started doing this, everybody was using Apple. And I remember thinking like, yeah. oh, I should buy Apple. And what did I look at? the dividend yield and how small yeah. it was. And I said, yeah. nah, this isn't for me. And it's just gone up the, well, yeah, like you said, the share price yeah. just gone up and up and up and they just give those nice increases. And, and just yeah. the, if, what you just said reminded me, cause it was Apple, right? So like my mentor invested in Apple early on and you know, it, it changed his life kind of thing along with some other stocks. But it, the it's the concept of that, like scrawny yields, like high, high like good companies. Because what happens is Ooh, like even like something like Costco, you check out, like, I forget what Costco's yield is. I actually wrote it down. Oh, I don't have it on the sheet. Like it's under 1%, I believe. Like, and it's just because the share price has been going up because it's a great business. And as long as the <laughs> PE is not going too crazy, like, you know, expanding too much, like as long as the underlying business is growing, et cetera, it's always going to be a bad yield. And so like, yeah. it's going to be low, but the actual absolute dollars that you're getting every year is increasing by 10%. Like it's a lot of money, but it's being hidden by a dividend yield. And You're that's so why it's like, key. do not yeah. obsess about yield itself and look at, okay, what, like, how is this growing over time? And yes, in the short term, a 4% yield or growing at 5% will continue to outpace like something that's a half percent at 10, yeah. you know, growth rate, but a couple of years, you know, which one would you rather invest in? Which one is more likely to cut it? Someone that's a 62, 63% payout ratio and a 4% yield. You got to like versus something else that's an 8% payout ratio and like half a percent yield, but growing like 10 or 12% a year. Like, and there are stocks that are doing that. And, you, you know, and again, it's not just, I know it will slow down, 
but to what? 8% yeah. growth, 9%, <laughs> 5 Like, so anyway, I'll get off that soapbox, but it's just one of the like core things of like, just take a moment, pause and say, all right, if I bought all 65 stocks that are in the di dividend or risk spreads, I'm going to have average results. Yep, what if I absolutely. looked at dividend growth and just cut out the bottom 10% or bottom 20%? If your listeners just took that one nugget away and did that, they would get better results than the average. And you can beat the market by doing things like that. The problem with like fund managers and things like that, they have too much money. They can't put more than 5% in a stock. They, they, mm -hmm. have like, they have like short term goals. They got to meet quarterly benchmarks or else funds are outflowing. Look what yep. happened to Kathy Wood, et cetera. You don't have to do that. You get to identify your core 20 stocks. You get to invest in them. You can cut one or two over time and you don't have to sit there and, and buy losing stocks. Like you don't have to like deal with it, you know? And anyway, I, which it, is why you speak, you're speaking also to, again, not, and you mentioned it in the book is not copying other people's portfolios. And I'm yeah. kind of laughing because so I did all do it. We all yeah. <laughs> so I kind of did, but I didn't recently with a non-dividend stock with Alibaba. And oh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I had been I buying. Tried, and I then, tried it too. And then when I heard Charlie Munger doubled down, I was like, you know, I'll, I'll add a few more. Charlie, you know, he's got he's got more, you know, knowledge and hookups than I do. And then yeah. he just recently cut half the position, which is why yeah. it's been tanking. So, you know, I thought you him never more know. And yeah, I thought him and Warren were tight with the, you know, holding stocks forever here. But yeah, uh, even, yeah, they, even show, Warren man. has changed. You know, he's gone in and out of airline stocks and, yeah. and things of that nature. Yeah. Just it, sometimes the thesis change. Sometimes like what you're thinking and they've seen it long enough, like many times before that they're like, all right, it's fooled me three times already. You know, <laughs> I'm going to like dump these stocks. Yeah. So anyway, talking to stocks. How about a few picks or one pick, whatever you got, you know, it doesn't have to be crazy in depth and yeah. Um, you well, know, we well listen, to... what I always say to people, and I said in the book too, is like, I, I don't like sharing my picks because of what happened to me. Like this is a well-known guy, like here's my portfolio and like doing it and it, and it blows up because things change, you know, oh, you like, don't have to, if you want, you no, can no, just, I will. Oh, Russ, you... oh, okay. I'm happy okay. to like, and I tried to find things that, that might yeah, be off yeah. the beaten path of typical um folks one is new core uh steel so uh, ticker symbol n-u-e uh new core oh my god when i was getting my mba they were revolutionizing the steel industry and lo and behold i have a stock screener that just looks at a bunch of things uh off the shelf by the way it's not like i'm coding things in, the, in that nature but it it ticked off return on invested capital return on on uh you know equity um, fantastic dividend growth, uh, all of those things. And like, again, I look at 23 different things. Their score uh, was only 15 out of 23. Like they have a solid company. The business is okay. Like the return on equity was a little bit low. Return on invested capital was quite low. You can imagine it's very capital intensive, the steel industry. Mm -hmm. uh, the dividend yield only 1.2%. So for me, my benchmark is two to four, you know, to get a green. Um, mm -hmm. so they were a little bit low there, but payout ratio 10%. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they, you know, they can keep growing that forever. Yeah. But Dividend that... consistency. They've been paying for 49 years. So yeah. like you're you're like, what? And then the dividend growth rate 5%. So it was like this was like a little bit more of a moderate pick and stuff that I, mm -hmm. you know, it's not a dividend rocket or anything like that. Another one, tractor supply company, TSCO. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those things, well, you, you might know it, like, I, I can't believe they're in 49 states, like when I was doing a quick research on them. And again, they always pop up on the top of my, my screeners, like when I'm sorting by like dividend growth or yeah. on capital. Well, speaking of dividend, didn't they just have a 77% dividend yeah. increase? I think it was. Something crazy, right? And I think it was 77%. Like that, that type of stuff actually scares me because I'm just yeah. like... <laughs> But that's actually management going, we know something you don't know. We're very confident in the future. You look at their management team, 1998, 1980, yeah, wow. 19, like, that, like there's are people that know the company really, really well, 2000 plus stores. They're growing at a, at a decent clip. 
like business analysis, five out of six greens for me, dividend analysis, five out of six, uh, you know, the yield is only 1.7 payout ratio, 43% free cash flow. I always like to look at cash flow from operations divided by the dividends or vice versa. I always flip it mm -hmm. 4.77. So that's 4.77 years that they can pay out of the cash flow, yeah. right? Like, you know, and you don't have to worry about like, dividend cuts and things of that nature. PE 27. I, I usually like to say under 25, but again, in this market, very difficult, but like, mm -hmm. that's a great pick. Another one, Dick's sporting goods. Like, I can't even believe I'm saying that live on the air, but DKS, <laughs> um, just because of like, you know, I don't know if they have a moat. I always look at for an economic moat, like, like something like tractor supply. There is no real other kind of player. Maybe there's like, I always forget the other Cabela's or some other, like something like it for Dick's with consolidation. Yes, there's online, but they get their, their online game going. I think there's the owner mentality there. They do a lot of special dividends, things of that nature too. I think the company owners want to get paid too. Lauren Hobart, president, the former Pepsi person, you know, so like I did not know that quality no. marketers there. So that's, that's just three. That's awesome. And thank you for sharing those. I love that. And yeah, if anybody for what he was talking about, uh, five out of six or four out of six or yeah. four out of five, whatever your numbers yeah. are, um, those are all in the book. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't, I, I probably should have emphasized, I'll, I'll emphasize this uh, for, you know, in the intro of just how, I mean, you went just so <laughs> in depth and not only is it in depth. So I think 211 pages, but yeah, also you have, um, I don't know what to call them snippets, like little condensed versions, like the 30 is a 31 dividend investing mistakes. Yeah. The, the top 31 and like, and again, it could like 31 dividend mistakes, the, the two minute drill. So like the, and I, I wish this was like live. I'm not like the most tech savvy guy, but like when I'm on Twitter and someone's like, Oh, look at this like stock. I go, okay. So I pull up an app stock master. It's just like a free app. Mm -hmm. And I go, I look, price and i look at pe i look at a couple of key things quickly and i'm like man that's flatlined versus the s p versus the the past five years and then you can go okay it's a two percent yield two times five ten percent it's like lagging by that's not a good that that can't be good and then if it's something that looks good i'll go to market beat i'll go i'll quickly find a dividend growth rate etc cetera, etc cetera. And then if it's like passing that eyeball test, I just go over to seeking alpha free, you know, watch list. I put yep. it in there and then, you know, later on I could just go down and I can compare it on, on like dozens of things. And in the book, you know, I just go through, I tell you exactly what the, you know, it's actually, here's my old school list. Like Look you just print that. it out. Like I did this during lunch. I was like nice. eating and I was like, Oh, what's the numbers. And this is the way it, it I don't want to say like should be, but like you look at the company management moat does it have an economic moat like that's warren buffett's term and others like is a great brand economies of scale like keeping people out how are durable managers? competitive advantage i think he that, calls that's it. exactly it like and <laughs> Same thing. then you AKA go into the business the yeah you go into business like free cash flow like oh my god i'm like this guy's talking about math what the hell is he talking about no you go to uh quick quick fs.net amazing site you Which I like that. I, it, so do they have, they have a free version, right? Oh, it's totally oh, free. Yeah. Totally free. The one that got me today, I actually alpha spread. <laughs> I kept hitting it too much and I can't like, I had to go. You got locked out. I got you locked gotta out. You got to go incognito and go back in. Hack the <laughs> so system. I use alpha spread for the valuation. Like, but there's me other, too. yeah. Yeah. There's other companies that you can use, but quickfs.net, you just put in the ticker. It's 10 years of financials. And then a summary tab, like right at the top, that just goes 10 year return on equity, 10 year free cash flow, 10 year, like all the things that like Warren Buffett, Monesh Pabrai, Phil Fisher, you know, like all of these people look at, it's right there. Like you don't have to calculate anything. And, yeah. Yeah. and so anyway, like that's why I just wanted to dumb it down. Like I know it was a long book and stuff like that, but like I, I just wanted to throw well, it out there and just say, please. Don't follow the herd. Don't just yep. go, oh, this person has 40,000 followers. Oh, they, they must know what they're doing. Or 
like, oh my God, their, their dividend income is 20 grand, 30 grand, 40 grand a year. You don't know what, when they bought, no. you don't know how much money they put in. You don't know, like, did they inherit the stuff? You don't know if their yield is crappy, like all of it, or, or risky, you know, like you don't know if they're juicing it with REITs or BDCs or closed end <laughs> funds. Like, God, yeah. So that's you all know, it, it is, is funny. Is like, I, I won't name, I remember there's a couple of people that I've talked with on Twitter and uh, my brain, my mind's blanking. One of them, they were, I think, AGNC. I think it's oh, an yeah, Embry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I looked at it. Yeah. And I was like, they, all they do is keep cutting the dividend, but they yeah. dilute shares. And because of that, they keep having these high yields. It's just, it's not sustainable. Um, yeah. It's yeah. funny. You, you're talking about the last 10 years. So I've been spoiling myself the last few months with Simply Safe dividends. Oh, and great. Yeah. I, yeah. I love it. And basically I was telling my wife, I think that's what the YouTube channel is now. I'm using the money from that to pay for Simply Safe dividends. And that's how I've hacked into using Simply Safe dividends for free. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, 399 bucks a year, 399, we can enunciate. Yeah, no, it's late, that's okay. But, um, yeah, but it's just, I love it. They have, you know, and I've used it a lot on the channel. Yeah. Really nice graphs. They go back 10 years. And like you said, it's just a really good flavor. And there's a reason that a lot of these pros use like 10 years. It's just a really solid uh, sample size of, of the business. Yeah. Yeah. And I, to be honest, like, it, well, we've, we've passed it now, but like when I was doing this 18, 19, 20, like just regular, you want to know what they did during, you know, the great recession. Like were these companies that cut the dividends? Did they keep the dividend? Did they grow it? Um, you know, what, what did they do 2020? You know, that'll be a thing as well. Like, you just want to know that these things are, like you said, durable, that these are solid businesses that aren't on that piece of like, oh my God, now business was a decline of 10%. Like, you know, like when it was log jam and the Panama Canal and things like that, I can't get my supply chain stuff. Now I can't sell my product. Like, you don't want yeah. your company to be like so close to not paying a dividend because they need to make their sales for, you know, the quarter. Like you want safety, yeah. margin of safety, back to what you said earlier. And that's that's what I'm looking for. Like that's why I look at free cash flow. I look at operations growth and things of that nature just to make sure these are good businesses. And I I hope I'm not scaring people listening to this. Like it is not difficult. Like it's simple, it's not even hard math. Like there is no math. Like like literally, I go to a, a a website and I look up a number like, and in the book, like I actually show you the screenshot and like where to go. You can go deep. You can like pay for services. You can do yep. newsletters. You can do all that. But like, if you can sit there during lunch and like write out like numbers from a, a free website or two, I like there that. was one that I had to calculate, which I had to divide free cash flow by dividend dollars on my phone. Like, that's it. You can even eyeball it. You're like, oh, it's 8 million versus 2 million paid. That's four. Yeah. That's a good coverage ratio. Like, so anyway, sorry, make a no, little I, bit of light of it, but like, I don't want to scare people because. Hey, if, if I can, if, if I can do this, I am awful in math. The furthest <laughs> I got in math was freshman year algebra. And I don't even really know how I graduated with just <laughs> having that. But my daughter is in eighth grade and she'll have math questions with algebra. I have no clue. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what she's yeah. doing. So if I can do this, I mean, yeah. it, it's really not that, not that difficult. Um, before I let you get out of here yeah. with your fabulous Fabio and your book, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want a couple of quick questions. What sure. is your favorite movie? And he had no idea I was going to ask these. What's oh, your favorite easy movie? One. I share it with my mentor, Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, so, like, beautiful. It, it, I, yeah. I love that you put that in the book. Yeah. Uh, I touched on that in a video a while ago and I had no, you know, I was, I yeah. just had the biggest smile when I read that in the book because I felt like Andy Dufresne. Every time I buy a share of a company that pays a dividend, I think of it as just a little, another little chip in the wall, you know, and then That's he goes exactly to the courtyard, it. drops it out. I, just I'm getting through. goosebumps when he said that, like the screenshot is Shawshank, like, you know, and you're just like, just put in the work. Yeah. It's, this is not overnight. Like if you want to do overnight, there's stock options, there's growth stocks, meme stocks, stuff like that. You want to build a great, like, 
guaranteed income for your family and generational wealth. It is gr investing in great businesses that happen to pay a nice dividend. Right. And the biggest ingredient to the success of Andy Dufresne was patience. Yes. It was patience, which is Absolutely. very key in what we're doing. It does take time and there's no getting rich quick. It's a lot of patience. Right. What is your favorite band? Oh, I was like, he's going to say that. Like, um, I listen to way too many podcasts. I usually say um, Dave Matthews band. Um, they are like, but I, yeah, Dave Matthews. It's hard band. to pick one. These are all silly yeah, questions. I you mean, you know, like, can't. It, songs, things of that nature, but I'll, I'll go with DMB. DMB, nice. And favorite food? I love pizza. Like, <laughs> I love pizza. I can't eat too much of it because it just goes right down here. But um, <laughs> yeah, not Chicago deep dish. Usually like thin slice or things of that, like a little bit more New York style. Um, but yeah, I could eat like almost any anything on a pizza. I love it. All right. So yeah. anybody, you got to check this out. Fantastic book. Uh, again, <laughs> the, the link to it is in the description below. Do yourself a favor, pick it up. You are, I'm guaranteeing that you will learn something. And Fabio, where can they reach you at? Where can people get a hold of you? Listen, I, I, you know, before this call, we were joking about, I'm no guru. I'm not sitting here like upselling people, things of that nature. I don't have a website anymore. You know, I, back in the day, I wrote two books and lots of eBooks and stuff like that. You can find me on Twitter. It's F Marciano, F M A R C I A N O. You could find me there. Um, you know, I'm just here to like share the, the, you know, the, the passion, like the, the, you know, the cool area of, of dividend investing and, and really just want to like, again, I do growth investing. I do other things of that nature. I just want to help people not, you know, kick themselves 20 years from now because they did it wrong. Like that's basically why I'm doing this. I love it. Well, I will link to your Twitter. So make it easy for people. Just click on the link. You'll go right to his, <laughs> the link right to his, his, you'll go right to his Twitter page. So Fabio, <laughs> thank you so very much for coming on. And I wish you all the success with your book and we'll definitely do it again. We'll have you on and we'll, uh, we'll chat some more. Absolutely. I appreciate it. And listen, Russ, thank you so much uh, for, for the opportunity, but also for what you're doing for, for all your subscribers and listeners, um, uh, you know, both on YouTube and all the other platforms that you're on. Just <laughs> sharing the wisdom, you know, sharing the advice in, in your, your unique way, the dapper dividend way. I appreciate yep. you learning and sharing. All right, man. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Take care, man. <laughs>